Hello, and welcome to episode 568 of the Juicebox Podcast. Hey guys, welcome back to another Diabetes Variables episode with me, I'm Scott, and Jenny Smith. Jenny, of course, works at Integrated Diabetes, and you can hire her if you'd like at integrateddiabetes.com. The Diabetes Variables series has been going over listener-submitted variables for type 1 diabetes. Today's variable is a full moon, and I don't mean when you pull your pants down. I mean the thing up in the sky that's made out of cheese. Now that I've said the moon's made out of cheese, I probably don't need to tell you this, but just in case, please remember while you're listening that nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Always consult a physician before making any changes to your healthcare plan or becoming bold with insulin. My friend Jenny Smith has had type 1 diabetes for over 30 years. She holds a bachelor's degree in human nutrition and biology from the University of Wisconsin. She's a registered and licensed dietitian, a certified diabetes educator, and a certified trainer on most makes and models of insulin pumps and continuous glucose monitors. And if that's not enough, she's pretty freaking awesome. This show is sponsored today by the glucagon that my daughter carries, Gvoke Hypopen. Find out more at gvokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. Jenny, is there any chance that a full moon is a diabetes variable? In the grand scheme of considering everything, I mean, my mom was a school teacher, Mm -hmm. like elementary, middle school teacher. She didn't have any kids who had diabetes, but she saw enough children. She, she could put a finger on the date of the calendar when the full moon happened because of the way that kids acted. She knew it was a full moon time. She just, she knew it. Um, I actually saw an article the other day, something about mercury being in retrograde until like October 18th or something this month. Mm -hmm. And so it was from school teachers and they had noticed that their kids were much more irritable, anxious, fatigued, not paying attention. Even the, the highest rate rated kids in the classes were having like issues. So, I mean, that has, I don't think that has anything to do with the moon, but it's something in terms of like whole, like, astrologically, whatever. (laughs) I don't know about that. I can tell you that a friend, a lifelong friend of mine is a police officer. I mean, lifelong, like he's getting ready to retire is how long he's Mm -hmm. a cop. And for as long as I've known him, there's a time where he'll just be like, hey, like, you know, sometimes I don't know if people know cops, sometimes they stop at your house, you stand outside, you talk a little bit, right? And I'll, as consistent as could be every month, he'd be like, I got to go. He's like, tonight's going to be crazy. And I'm like, yeah. why? And he's like, full moon. He's like, th- he's like, there'll be more car accidents. There'll be more assaults. He's like, I just, it's, I don't know, man. He goes, it just happens, you know? So, uh, so as a variable, mm-hmm. could it have some impact on blood sugar? I think not directly, but indirectly, as we've talked about all of the variables in diabetes already, right? things like anxiety things like appetite or attitude or fatigue or i mean all of these things if they're being if they're being impacted because of the placement of the moon and the phase of the moon and whatnot that could then impact the blood sugar right so there's no right? direct line it's not like the moon no. falls off <laughs> and your blood sugar starts coming up for a real physiological but what if a full moon makes you anxious or like, right. or something like what is it i mean the moon's or not sleep as well i mean we had a whole episode we talked all about sleep and impact on blood sugar so yeah. if you're not sleeping as well or you're more tired or whatnot all of that are there's stress factor variables on the body that could impact your blood sugar so yes there's not a direct like line from the moon to your blood sugar that's like <laughs> this is what's gonna happen now but indirectly i think so maybe there are other ways that it impacts you Okay. Yeah. And so I think that's a funny one. Well, yeah. I mean, but it got said enough that it made it on the list. So Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, listen, in fairness, breathing is also on this list too. (laughs) So (laughs) 
that's people's uh people trying to be funny, you know. Um, but I really just thought like, okay, obviously a full moon doesn't have anything to do with your blood sugar. But if it is impacting people, like you said, like maybe there's other things that come from that that then in turn impact your blood sugar. So they indirectly it does then. Right. You know? Right. That's all. I'm going And what a go. perfect time of the year for talking about a full moon. I'm gonna put this up around Halloween. I think it's perfect. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for doing that with me. You're very welcome. Hey, don't go anywhere. I'm going to be talking more about the moon in just a second. Gvoke Hypopen has no visible needle and is the first pre-mixed auto-injector of glucagon for very low blood sugar in adults and kids with diabetes, ages 2 and above. Not only is Gvoke Hypopen simple to administer, but it's simple to learn more about. All you have to do is is go to gvokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. Gvoke shouldn't be used in patients with insulinoma or pheochromocytoma. Visit gvokeglucagon.com slash risk. All right, let's talk about the moon for a second. How often do you think a full moon occurs on Halloween on October 31st? The answer is only once every 18 to 19 years. The first full moon after Halloween is November's moon, which is traditionally called the full beaver moon. See, aren't you glad you waited? The full moon after Halloween is thought to be the time when the deer rut, or mating season for deer, is in full force. You know what I mean? Like, they're out there just, like, thumpering away. Thumper was the bunny in Bambi. I mean, for those of you who are not a thousand years old. Okay, a little more about the moon. So as you may know, there is a lot of superstition around full moons. I've gone online and tried to find some fun things to tell you about them. First of all, I can tell you with a fair amount of confidence that werewolves don't happen at full moons, but people think they do. Werewolves are not real people. My God, if you think they are, I'm so sorry. This here says, oh, this is interesting. Menstrual cycles are affected by the full moon. A 2011 study showed evidence that a full moon affects the periods of women 16 to 25 years old. Uh, They have no reason for this. It has not been fully explored, but the findings do point to a full moon influencing a woman's menstrual cycle, which I guess then technically would impact your blood sugar. So, aha! Seems that sea turtles lay their eggs during a full moon because of the, no, the higher tide takes them further into shore and makes a better place for their nests. This is a little sketchy, but a recent study says that the gravitational pull of the moon may have something to do with the amount of births. Statistics have shown a high rate of babies being born on around the supermoon. They call it unexplained, and um, I can also find a number of articles that will say that that's absolute uh, BS. So, you know, grain of salt. This is interesting. One study monitored brain activity on sleeping participants, and it showed that it took longer to fall asleep during a full moon than during other phases of the moon. It also found less brain activity related to deep sleep and shortened sleep times all around. There have not been many studies on it, but if you're having trouble sleeping during a full moon, mm -hmm. I alluded to this earlier, emergency rooms Get busy. Many ER doctors think that a full moon really does have an effect on the number of patients admitted, as well as the strangeness of the injuries that they see. It's an interesting little website. The crime rate goes up. I said that too. Oh, moods change. Research has shown that the moon's gravitational pull may very well be responsible for messing with our emotions. Those with unstable personalities or personality disorders may be extra sensitive to the moon's pull. So, on average, the moon is 238,855 miles from Earth, and it seems it can impact things. One of those things might be your blood sugar. Dum, dum, dum. That was supposed to be scary music. I can't afford, like, sound effects and stuff. Although, I did pay for this music. A huge thank you to one of today's sponsors, Gvoke Glucagon. Find out more about Gvoke Hypopen at gvokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. You spell that G V O K E G L U C A G O N dot com forward slash juice box. 
I just want you to know that there are so many stories about the moon and weird sex stuff. I, uh, I did not get involved in it while I was looking, but turns out that might be something too. At least people think it is. Hey, make sure to check out those other diabetes variables. They're right there in your podcast player and at juiceboxpodcast.com. You also don't want to miss the Diabetes Pro Tip series, the Defining Diabetes series, How We Eat, After Dark. There are so many to choose from. Check them out at juiceboxpodcast.com and diabetesprotip.com. And if you're a U.S. resident, go to t1dexchange.org forward slash juicebox. Fill out the brief survey that helps people living with type 1 diabetes. Super simple questions. Completely HIPAA compliant, completely anonymous, takes you less than 10 minutes. You can do it right on your phone, right on your sofa. You're going to help people living with type 1. You're going to support the podcast. I'm trying to get to 2,000 completed surveys by the end of Diabetes Awareness Month. So one month from now. Go, go, go. If you all stopped and did it right now, just based on how many people I know are listening to this episode, not only would there be way more than 2,000, but you might you might hear a pop like an audible out in the world, that would be the minds of the people at the T1D exchange just blowing. They'd just be like, oh, I can't believe that happened. That'd be it. T1D exchange.org forward slash juice box.